Test one, two, three.
Feliz Navidad, mis amigos en Cristo. <laughs> this is our time for announcements. Norma. <laughs> Good morning. Wow, it looks like a whole bunch of people went north to the cold and the rain and the snow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have one little short announcement. Um, I have posted on the bulletin board Eileen Singular's phone number and address, and she wants to hear from all of us. So if you would write it down and send her a nice card, she's very lonesome and would like to hear from all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. Mary. <clears throat> This is the second verse of the plea that I made last week. Somebody signed up to uh, pick up the bread from Publix for February, but nobody did for January. So if um, we want to continue our good works with that program, somebody needs to sign up to pick up the bread in January. The sign-up sheet's in there. And I'm happy to say that my family got out of Oklahoma last night, and they're on their way. Oh, uh, hey, all of them. A little unusual announcement. Uh, six of us ran into our former pastor, Evan Farrar, last Saturday. <clears throat> he said, please give my greetings to the whole congregation. Uh, I'm sorry David Durandi isn't here, apparently. We were they surprised. Left. Pardon? They're, they're on that group heading north. Oh, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> <laughs> when Dave gets back, you can have some fun with him. Uh, pastor Farrar's uh, wife was in the musical, and that's why we went to see it. And so she and some others that were actors brought him up on stage twice. He played the part of Mr. Lee. So when he gets back, you ask him to share with you his part about Mr. Lee. He did a fine job. <laughs> Any other announcements? Well, good morning officially. And welcome to our worship service on the 4th. Sunday of Advent as the excitement builds towards Wednesday and what's coming on Wednesday? Christmas! Yes! Christmas is coming. And in our Advent proclamation, we're down to singing one week, but it really isn't one week as the children know so well. Anyhow, welcome to our worship service here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And if you haven't already taken the friendship books, the little red book on the end of the pew towards the center aisle, please take that now and open it and sign your name to it and pass it along through your row. If you're visiting us for the first time, we like you to include your address at home. And if your home is here in the Northport vicinity, we like you to give us your uh, telephone number and or email so that we can tell you how happy we were to have you here. And also, if you're a first time visitor, would you raise your hand because we have a gift for you. Any first time visitors? Right over here, Norma. Anybody else? You will discover in there that besides some information about our church, there's popcorn. And it's very appropriate for this time of year. You can pop popcorn and still string it on your tree, or you can eat it or both, whichever you want to do. If you have a cell phone, I ask that you please either turn it off or put it on the silent mode. Uh, this week, there's no meetings. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but there are two very special worship services. Christmas Eve, which is Tuesday. Five o'clock is a family service, which is, really means that it's the service that is designed for families with younger children. So if you know of families, if you have a family with younger children, if you know of families with younger children and they're looking for a child-friendly Christmas Eve service, tell them to come. 
to the one at 5 o'clock. We have fun at that service. The traditional candlelight service of lessons and carols will be then at 7 o'clock. And those are the worship services, and those are the gatherings here at the church uh, for this coming week. Let us be in worship. Remember, it's one. Soon we shall celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
We worship God with joy in our hearts as we are reminded of the words the angels said on that first Christmas day. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. As Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things so that you, my, my joy will be in you and that your joy will, may be complete. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is joy, joy that is ours, not at Christmas, but always. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, as Christmas draws near, there is a sense of excitement in the air. We can see joy in our lives and see it in those around us. Still, some of us, this is a sad time because of unhappy things that have happened in our lives. Help us to have the joy that does not depend on earthly happenings, but on you. Help us be filled with your joy so that we may share it with the joyless world. Amen. is at hand. A child is about to be born. A voice is calling, calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Our God is like a shepherd who lovingly cares for us all. A voice is calling, calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Our God has not forgotten us, but has come to be with us. In Jesus, who we call Emmanuel, meaning God with us. A voice is calling, calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Dear God, open our hearts to your challenges, so that we may be like Mary and Joseph, who were ready to serve you in whatever way you wanted, and whose faith remained firm. Amen.
may be seated. The Gospel reading is from Matthew, the first chapter, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus." For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and he named him Jesus. Here ends the reading of the Gospel lesson. Ring Christmas bells, ring them loud with a message bringing peace on the earth. Tidings of good cheer, come carols, comes, come and join with the angels singing joy to the world, Christmas time is here. Children, gather around and listen, you'll hear the sound of angels filling the sky, telling everyone, Christmas time is here. like to invite the children to come up to the Christmas tree this morning. Why don't you just all sit down here? We'll just ignore those folks for the moment. I don't know what you do at your house on Christmas morning, but 
when I was your age on Christmas morning, the Christmas tree was kind of the first place I wanted to go. Yeah? yeah? No kidding. Why? I wake up, I wake up every morning to go to the bathroom, and I see presents under the tree. You see presents under the tree. Yeah. Why do we have presents under the tree? Because Santa Claus brings them. You know why presents got started in the first place? Because the three wise men brought gifts. Yeah. But what was the best gift of Christmas? Yeah. The best gift of Christmas was Jesus and Jesus' birth. And so the wise men brought gifts in order to say thank you for the birth of Jesus. And so we both receive gifts and we give gifts at Christmas time to show love and to show our thankfulness for God's love in sending us Jesus. Well, this church is your family. And in this church family, the church family wants to say thank you to all of you because you are all special and we're glad that you're a part of the family. And so because the church loves you and knows that God loves you, the church has presents for you. Hmm. How about that? Walton's not here. Let's go. Cool. This one's for Carla. And this is for Hannah. My arm is sore. There you go. And this one's for Tatiana. I can barely make out this name. Who do you suppose this is for? Yeah. Yeah, he seems to be reaching for it. He seems to know his name, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Derek. Grace. John. You gotta come up for it, kid. Yeah. The gifts are here, but you gotta respond. <laughs> and last but not least is Louie. Yeah. Okay. Merry Christmas to all of you. God's blessings on you. Let's sing. Jesus loves you. You can go back and sit down. Just I know. reading is found in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little that for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Here ends the reading of the prophecy lesson. <clears throat> A 
Once upon a time, back in those strange period of history that we know as the Middle Ages, there lived a family of robbers. There was mother robber, very large, hefty woman who showed the signs of age even though she really wasn't all that old because of her hard work and living away from many people most of her adult life. And there was Father Robber. Father Robber was a very skinny, sort of a sickly man, and he had tried to work for an honest living back years before, but nothing seemed to go quite right for him, and so he found that the easiest way for him to provide for his wife and his nine children was to sneak into the gardens of the Duke's castle down in the village and to take things, uh, fruits and vegetables and grab a chicken uh, here and there. The robber family, and there were nine little robbers, and they were all very nondescript uh, children ranging in ages and uh, had long hair and could scarcely see through their hair. It was so long hanging down in front of their eyes, and they were rather unkempt little children. They lived up in the forest in a cave. Well, it really wasn't a cave. It wasn't large enough to be a cave. It was really just a large hole uh, in the hillside. In the summertime, it was okay for them to live there uh, because it could stay cool when the summer evenings and days got warm and hot and a little humid. But in the winter, when the cold winter winds were howling and blowing and there could be some snow even, it was a very chilly place for them to live. But they hadn't always lived there. They used to live in a little shanty down on the edge of the village near the castle until one time Father Robber was caught taking a chicken. And so the duke and the duke's council banished the robber family from ever living down there. And that's why they then lived in this hole up in the forest. There was one day in the summer when things hadn't been going particularly well for several weeks for the robber family. Father Robert had been ill and laying there in this cave, unable to make a trip down into the town at night. And the children were looking rather undernourished and quite peaked. And so Mother Robert decided that she was going to take the oldest children who were able to carry some bundles of food and go down to the monastery at the edge of the village and beg for some food. Father Robert protested, said that this was not a good thing to do, that it was not good for his self-image, but Mother Robert was not going to listen to his protests and so she did take the six eldest children, and they went down to the village. Mother Robert decked herself out in the best clothes that she had of the two different sets of clothing that she had. She was wearing a nice long green skirt that had been handed down from her grandmother, as a matter of fact, and it had six very unnoticeable patches and a blouse that she had found somewhere, and a shawl that had fallen off the rummage collector's cart. The children just were dressed like they always were in very nondescript clothing. And they made their trek down through the woods, down the path, over the brooks, long walk, till finally they came to the road that led to the village, and then they made their way down the village 
until they came, came to the village. And then Mother Robber very carefully led them through the back alleys around the outskirts because they were not allowed in the village until they came to the gate that led into the monastery. Mother Robert lined the children up behind her like a mother would line up her ducklings in order to follow her in in order. And she opened the gate and they walked in. And for a moment, Mother Robert's breath was taken away. Because there in the garth, the courtyard of the monastery, was the most beautiful formal garden that Mother Robert could ever imagine there being. It had the loveliest flowers. There were orange ones and red ones and purple ones and yellow ones, and some were rather short, close to the ground, and some were big and sort of bushy, and some of them were velvet-looking, and some had tassel-type things on them. And for a moment, Mother Robber experienced a twinge of emotion that she didn't usually experience. But that was not her mission, and so very quickly she gathered up the children and ordered them to follow her, and off they went. Such a sight they made that the gardeners that were working there in the garth looked up and were startled by what they saw. It was such an odd sight. The head gardener came running over, almost tripping over his wheelbarrow, to stop her and said, wait, 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 you can't come in here, you can't come in here. The monks are all in prayer right now. But Mother Robber was not to be put off by the gardener, and so she went marching right on to a door that she saw slightly ajar, and she pushed it open and walked in, and there they were standing in this large room, which was the kitchen. And there were fruits, and there were vegetables that were cooking in pots, and There were chickens hanging over the oven that were roasting, and the children were so hungry and taken with this that they just broke out of the line, and they started racing around the kitchen, and they were scooping up hands of vegetables and grabbing fruit and tearing off hunks of the chickens that were roasting. But Mother Robber said, Stop! That's not why we're here! And very quickly she got them back into line in order, but such a ruckus they caused that that the uh, monks were taken out of their prayer. And so the the, uh, assistant abbot, whose room was right next to the kitchen, came hurriedly into the kitchen and saw this woman and these unkempt little children and looked at them fiercely and said, What is going on here? What are you doing here? You filthy pigs of the devil! Get out of here! Get out! Get out! Get out! Well, Mother Robber was not to be put off by an assistant abbot. She just put her hands on her hips and stood her ground, and she says, I am here to see the abbot, and I am not moving from this spot until I see the abbot. Well, by this time... The other monks around had also come and wanted to see what all the commotion was about. And some of them were just like the assistant abbot. They wanted to know, what was this motley crew doing standing in their kitchen? Get rid of them. And some of them looked at the children and just thought that they were funny looking, and they started to laugh. Into this came a very elderly old man with thinning white hair. But sparkling, gentle eyes. And when he entered the room, all sounds stopped, including Mother Robber, who was so taken by this man's appearance that she curtsied and bid her children to bow. And the man looked at her and said, Madam, what is your business here? And she said, I've come to see the abbot. And he said, I'm the abbot. Come with me to my quarters. 
And so he led Mother Robber and the children to his living quarters. And when they arrived there, Mother Robber began to explain who she was in the situation. And the abbot said, I know who you are. I'm familiar with your circumstances. And I know that you were banished from the village because of your dishonest activities. She says, but we're struggling right now and we're without food. And he said, then I will help you. And so he said that he would give her and her children some bundles of food that they could take back to their cave. But the whole time he was talking with her, he couldn't help but notice that she was looking out the window of his room out onto the garth. And he said, do you like my garden? And she says, oh, it is lovely. It has the most beautiful garden flowers that I think I have ever seen. And he said, garden flowers? Uh, You've seen prettier flowers, more beautiful flowers than these, places other than a garden? Madam, I have sent all over the world for these flowers. Some of them have come from as far off as Asian, some of them have come from Italy, and some have come from France and from Spain. And she said, well, yes, sir, up in the forest, we have some wild flowers that are even prettier. And there is one flower that is especially beautiful. It only blooms once during the year. And that is on Christmas Day. And it is the most spectacular, loveliest rose that I have ever seen. And that I think that you would ever have seen. And he said, a rose? It blooms only once a year and that's on Christmas in the winter? I must see this. Do you think I could come to your home and see this flower? And she said, yes. If you prepare well and rest on your journey, and God willing, you could do that. Well, she and the children returned back to their cave with their bundles of food, and they were fed for a while, and Father Robert got his strength back. Summer turned to fall, Fall turned to winter. On Christmas Day, the old abbot got up and seemed to feel younger than normal. And there was a spring to his step. And he went to the assistant abbot and he says, Brother, come, we're going to go and we're going to spend the day with the robber family up in the forest. And the assistant abbot said, oh, no, we shouldn't do that. This is the day of the Lord's birth, and we should spend the day staying right here and staying in prayer in the chapel. The abbot said, no, brother, I want to make this trip. I want to see this flower. And so after they had finished their noon meal, they packed up and they began their trek up into the forest. And they did wind their way up the path and over the frozen brooks by now, resting along the way until long in the late afternoon, early evening, they saw the smoke coming out of this hole in the side of a hill and knew that they must be approaching the robber's cave. And There they were, and Mother Robber saw them coming, and she met them unceremoniously uh, near the entrance and bid them to come in, and they went in and followed her, and they went to the back of this little hole and sat down, and Mother Robber brought some wooden bowls with some very thin broth in it. The children and Father Robber were already eating theirs. And then when they finished, they just sat, for a few hours. No conversation. 
just sat. Feeling a little bit of the chill, there was a fire there, of course, it was giving them some heat, but they had their coverings held around them. And then, as it was getting later in the evening, Mother Robert rose and she motioned for them to follow her. The whole family and the assistant abbot and the abbot followed her out to the outdoors and down a path and up a little walkway until they came to a clearing in the woods. And there was a little bit of snow on the ground. And they just stopped and they stood. And there was nothing there other than it was a clearing. And the old abbot was holding his wrap around him and drawing it in tighter and tighter to keep the chill out. But just as the chill was beginning to affect him, he began to feel a strange warmth. And there was a light that was breaking out like a huge big moonlight and the light seemed to shine on a spot there in this ground and the little bit of snow that was there melted and it got green and then little green shoots began to rise up out of the ground And there were little buds on them. And the buds got larger and larger until they opened. And there in place of the buds were these beautiful, beautiful roses. And the abbot just looked at them. The assistant abbot said, this is the work of the devil. And with that, the light disappeared And the flowers began to shrivel and they began to go back into the ground. But the old abbot dove forward on his knees and he grabbed one and he clutched it in his hand and he was able to bring it out and hold it in his hand. And he looked up at the assistant abbot and he said, My brother, look at what you have done. These are beautiful flowers. This rose is a sign from God. For as surely as we have judged these people for their social sins, God has chosen to give to them this beautiful flower as a sign of his grace and mercy to all people. And as I have had the opportunity to see this, I can now die in peace. And with that, the old abbot slumped over and died. The assistant abbot and Father Robert lifted him up, and they carried him back down to the village, to the monastery. The old abbot was buried in the formal garden, in the garden. And on top of his grave was placed the rose that he had clutched in his hand. The assistant abbot then went to the duke's council and asked if the ban on the family could be lifted because he had something for them to do. And that was for Mother Robert to tend the garden in the garth. And so the ban was lifted and the Robert family got to come back and live in the village. And that was Mother Robert's job, was taking care of the garden. As far as we know, that those roses up in the forest have never bloomed again. Or at least if they have, they've never been seen again by righteous people. But somewhere in a deserted monastery plot, there is a rounded hump of ground 
in which appears a rose on every Christmas night. Reminding us that God's grace is for all people, regardless of their circumstances or who they are. Well, that's the story of the Christmas rose. It's only a parable. It doesn't matter whether you identify with the assistant abbot or with the robber family. It's the message of Christmas. God's love is for all people. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we do thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ who comes to let us know the fullness of love, who lived it in his life, and who invites all to receive this love and to share in it and to give it. Be with us in this special season that we may again feel your presence as surely as we can feel the mystery of a Christmas rose. And we ask your blessing in Christ's name. Amen. This is a time of year when we have much to celebrate, and we celebrate much. In this church, we have much to celebrate, and we celebrate much. I'd like to call on Sandy McKean to come and lead us in one of these very special celebrations. We would like to celebrate two people that work very hard in our church, uh, Mike and Patty Bork. They go over and above their job descriptions. They work very hard to keep this church running so smoothly. We would like to present you with a gift from the congregation, so could you come forward, please?
Did you send Mike home? Mike? <laughs> Is he not here? He's not here. Okay. There you go. I guess there's Eddie. Cookie jar. And most cookies ha jars have cookies in them, but this one doesn't. A lot of times we put cash for stage and cookie jars for a rainy day. So we would like to present you with $520 from the congregation <laughs> for all that you do for our church. We appreciate everything. <laughs> I'm speechless. I, I, I just, on behalf of Mike and I, I just want to thank you so, so much. We're, we're just, we're just so grateful. We love this church, and everything we do is just filled with love. And, 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 um, you know, it. This church gives us so much in so many ways. Just, it, it fills our hearts, and um, we're just so grateful. Thank you. But <laughs> what what other celebrations do you have? What would you like to celebrate, Norma? Oh, I'll give you the jog, boy. <laughs> We're not going to miss, we're not going to miss this. <laughs> Christmas, okay. Happy birthday, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marion. Happy birthday to you. Speech, speech. No, well, we will <laughs> And Carol Pratt, she was saying, also has a birthday. On Christmas Day. Any, any other birthdays? <laughs> Anybody want to admit to a birthday? <laughs> Very nice. Other celebrations? Mark. Uh huh. Other celebrations. I'd like to celebrate both of our children are coming for Christmas. Okay. Grandchildren too? No, we don't. No. Okay. All right. Well, it's because you know sometimes those celebrations get precarious. We go. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes. Thank you for all your good work. Hassan. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. We're glad you're well. And speaking of coincidences, somebody else in this room was on that cruise ship that you were on. Michael. <laughs> Michael said he knew that somebody was taken off. He didn't know the, you know, the connection. Yeah. We are so thankful. Wow. Yeah. I'd like to celebrate my brother and his friends down for Christmas from Ohio. And I, we can celebrate that you're down from Ohio, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just saw on the Weather Channel what's going on in Ohio again and what's happening to the airports. And I'm wondering about Martha and David Durandi, who left to go back to Cincinnati. And I saw Cincinnati was one of the airports that was being affected by the storm, so. They were driving up there. What's that? Winter is supposed to be that way. Yeah, yeah, right. <coughs> is it? Rain turning to snow. Okay, Norma? Oh. Every Sunday. Those who didn't get the message, we are providing dessert on May 23rd, and we appreciate all the donations that we can get. <clears throat> okay, very good. Other celebrations? Hi. Um, a couple of weeks ago, many of us were able to hear the Northport Choir perform at the cabaret, and one of the singers, who was Rudolph, Okay. So just wanted to let you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Cindy. And speaking of good news in that vein, uh, Ginny Nix had her surgery Friday on her feet. She told us last week that she was going to be doing this and asked for prayers. Uh, she came through it wonderfully. And I talked with her on the phone yesterday, and her, the tone of her voice just you know, sounded so good. It sounded just like Ginny. And the thing that we really need to pray for is that Jenny practices patience and stays calm and cool and you know, doesn't, doesn't try to rush it along. We're on concerns. You know, Luzon? Okay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, yeah. True friendship, true love, yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Concerns. Ralph. Yes. Yeah, this is a tough time for people who are away from their families for any reason. Those who are in the service cannot be with their families. Yeah. Other concerns? We are talking about the weather, and sometimes we get real smug about this here in Florida when we're doing well. But a real concern is that there are people who are being caught by this storm uh, that's going through the Midwest and the uh, upper Northeast. 
and their lives are being disrupted by flight plans and flights and so on and so forth. And some of them are trapped by the weather itself. So we want to keep those people in our minds, our thoughts, and our prayers. Let us join our hearts in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious God, it is a season in which we are filled with so much love and the feelings of mystery and joy. And we are so thankful for this. And we're thankful for our friends and families with whom we can share this special time. But we are mindful of people who are not able to be with their families and friends. And we also are aware of those who are struggling with illnesses, people who are recovering from surgeries, and people who are facing surgeries. And we pray for people who do live in the out of doors in this time of year because they're homeless and people who struggle for food. We pray, O oh God, that the reason for Christ coming into the world be with us, not just in this season, but be with us at all, all times. Be with this church in this special Advent season of its life. May its Christmas be a real joy when it comes. Hear us now as we bring to you our silent prayers. Let us join our voices and our hearts in our unison prayer. Our most giving God, as we listen again to stories about this wondrous season, prepare us for receiving the gift of your love revealed fully to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, who came that we might have life and have it in the fullness with which you intended in our creation. Then may we respond with your compassionate love to all who share your creation with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us come bearing our gifts. Like a shepherd
us people are sharing Christmas greetings, the music of the season plays, food is prepared and gifts are wrapped, and yet somehow God at the heart of giving we sometimes find it hard to share in this joyful time. So we offer up to you along with our offerings our feelings of sorrow, of frustrations, our angst and our anguish, all the emotions that bubble up reminding us of the losses we've suffered this past year or in years past. We give them to you not to be delivered from them, but to be able to put them in their proper place so that we can celebrate with others without trivializing or ignoring the way we really feel. Bolster us, brighten our days, grant us your divine perspective of all our conflicting emotions. In your name we pray. Amen. The grace of the child be with us all. 
during these holiday times, these healing times, these holy times. Amen.